So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another instalment of Silent Night from 2012 in PCs. This is a subseries of the podcast Under the Stairs where I sometimes forget the intro to these because I realise that I've recorded about four or five of them already and have not really explained what we're doing, which just makes it even more confusing than you're welcome. But we're taking the movie Silent Night from 2012. We're breaking up into five minute reviewable segments. I'm getting guests from around the globe to join me to talk about those five minutes. And yes, I know what you're thinking, Duncan, really, for a movie with the quality of Silent Night from 2012, and I'm, yeah, if, if not this movie in this format, then what movie in this format? Joining me on this episode, discussing minutes 20 to 25, is my very good friend, Mr. Jeff Lon. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, I'm doing all right. <laughs> Back again for another one of these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't scared you away yet, even though the quality of movies are dipping quite bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a certain point where I, I, I'm going like that. I'm just going to keep lowering the quality and see how many of you actually stick around until it's just me recording five minute installments. <laughs> Talking to yourself and waiting for an answer. <laughs> what do you think, Duncan? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't 16 know. Duncans uh, on the recording. What's happening here? Um, I wouldn't put it to you. Yeah, like you'd seen this movie before, yes? Yeah. yeah. A few times, or was it uh, yeah, like a one I'd and say done? two or three times. Two or three? All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I guess <laughs> I just like bad movies, but. <laughs> you are one of the the um lucky ones in yeah. this um film selection i know what you're saying to yourself no i'm not duncan but you are <laughs> and that you at least get a scene in this which is paying reference badly but paying reference yeah. to the original movie of which it takes its name as a remake and that's really only there's maybe a bit like a handful of scenes where it actually tries to link up and the rest is its own thing you know it's running it's marching to the beat of its own drum so to speak yeah it's, so, and one of them lands in this segment. So, I mean, I'm excited. I know you are. Um, <laughs> so, let's talk about the bookmarking here. This will open on the deputy walking away from a street Santa and answering a call on her walkie-talkie. This five minutes will close with the same deputy um, turning round um, in a basement to go up a flight of stairs after discovering a dead body. And that's your that's your five-minute window um, let's get to some details here. So, yeah, this we've just missed out on primo sarcastic Street Santa, which upsets me in this segment because he's one of the MVPs of of the movie for me. Is this sassy Street Santa? 
um, <laughs> who's played by the actor whose name always escapes me, and I've done this about six times on here, but he's really good in this as just a kind of belligerent, downtrodden. He is the he is the titular bad Santa that Billy Bob Thornton wishes he could be, but he yeah. can't. He yeah. can't be that way. Um, and she's on the walkie-talkie, and she gets a call. Um, we've got a call coming in about that abandoned house in Watson. It could be a dead raccoon. I've got written here, must be a really, really, really fucking big dead raccoon. Yeah. Yeah, it would have to be. I mean, if people are smelling it from blocks away or whatever, <laughs> what, whatever they're claiming on this, because, I mean, it's a boarded up house. I, I, I don't see, you know, I didn't see too much destruction on it or like vents and fans blowing out the stink. So I'm not. Plus, it's Christmas sure. time. It's not like the heat is making it decompose quicker. Surely. Yeah. Surely it's cold. <laughs> Surely that's. <laughs> yeah well you mentioned the you mentioned the street santa we get i mean i've never met a town with this much santa cheer even at like a santa <laughs> run or something everybody's wearing a santa suit in this so which is hey. the fa which is the frustration about this remake and i mentioned this a few times there is the possibility of even taking the name silent night and adapting it to your own thing the idea of like new york has and other cities in america have their santa cons <laughs> Where it's that 5k run where people dress up like Santa and they all go running, they all get horribly drunk and vomit in the street afterwards. Um, which is what a better way to spread that Christmas cheer. Christmas tradition, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the idea of like a murderous Santa set in a place where everyone is dressed like Santa is kind of a cool concept. I mean, it's Halloween, essentially. It's Michael Myers yeah. walking around in costume while everyone else is dressed in costume but that to me is like that's a cool thing lean into that this movie could not be fucked leaning into that at all so as a result it shows you shots of santa but it's like no one seems to like i want to lock down and everyone in a santa costume because they do the jaws thing like apparently this santa convention is the lifeblood of this town <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we shut yeah. this down during peak Santa season. The town's ruined. Like the mayor's out there going, "We can't do this," you know. And the, you know the streets are safe. Like you can <laughs> sit on Santa's knee. Um, it's it's just bizarre. And like this is, but the, the, on some level, this also kind of indicates the level of crime this town is supposed to get. Yeah. Which is why the ending doesn't make any fucking sense at all in this movie, along the laundry list of other things that have happened in this movie that don't make sense. But there has been a massacre in this town before, some, what, 40 years ago or something like that, with a guy dressed up like Santa. And I just don't think the new sheriff, who's Malcolm McDowell, who is like 70 in this movie or something, doesn't know the town history. Can't recall, oh yeah, we had this because the dad makes reference to it later yeah. on. You know, mm -hmm. a, a, a Briar Moor or whatever their surname is. It's not the first time we've <laughs> taken on a Santa, which feels like a very cryptic throwaway thing. And at the end, it's like, ah, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, d mm -hmm. I don't know. Like you're saying, there's some parts of this movie that are, you you could say this one is like a guilty pleasure for sure. But, oh, um, 100%, yeah. But like there is just some messy stuff in this. <laughs> like plot wise, yes. Dialogue wise, definitely. It looks like acting, the only thing. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> acting is spotty, is how I would. Uh, <laughs> it's patchy in places. Um, like the, the problem is, it's tone, isn't it? Like, so, I think so. Like M Malcolm McDowell is playing this beautifully sarcastic role because he's clearly in this for a paycheck, right? Right. But you juxtapose him with our street Santa who delivers a great performance here later on when he's in the cells and he's just like ripping apart christmas mm -hmm. to shreds that is some great acting like i i go through the movements of like he raises it up he brings it down it's a great monologue it's greatly delivered and then you switch to malcolm mcdill who <laughs> can't keep an accent or like the other santa claus who's the red herring in this movie who literally talks about date raping um, yeah, and to a police officer who doesn't right. bat an eyelid, um, and you're, you're like, what, what, are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. How did we end up here? Um, with a giant dead raccoon in a house, which is causing a smell potentially. Um, yeah. And the deputy returns by saying, You have to send Giles. And she says, Giles is busy. And the deputy says, Doing what? Changing his maxi pad? And I'm like, Oh, sass, sassy. <laughs> Um, 
And then she's like, no, taking a report. There's a chat about a woman who died. Sorry, but like, she says, taking a report. I've written here. There's chat about a woman who died at the start of the movie having an affair as her husband is making the report. That might come in interesting later on. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. No. Um, <laughs> so, then <laughs> I put to put here. We jump to a scene recreated from the original movie, only shitter. Um, <laughs> so, this is not quite Jay from Jay and Silent Bob sitting with his grandfather in a care home. His grandfather has pantomime like stage makeup to make him look himself old. I think this guy's maybe 30. Um, and they're just they don't look great. They don't look great. <laughs> drawn, <laughs> drawn a lot of grey lines on his face and sprayed his hair grey to make him look old. What do those guys from the Haunted Mansion look like? Oh, I, I don't know. Some charcoal and pencil on his face. Sorry, put it on there. Put it on. <laughs> he looks like he looks like one of the shittier characters from the further and the insidious franchise <laughs> like, oh that's a good call yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. it's terrible it's, it's and it's noticeably terrible and we have this awkward conversation of not quite g and um, saying brought your newspaper couldn't finish it this you know couldn't finish the sudoku and he throws the newspaper on the ground he's like mom and dad missed our flight so it's just me guess it kind of sucks being alone on Christmas Eve he's not because you're there but yeah. we'll, we'll forgive him that he says hell you don't even know what day it is and then he turns around to the wallet which like this guy is catatonic right? <laughs> this is the other thing yeah yeah what, the, why has yeah. he got a wallet with money beside him he's oh it's just loaded needs. with money and like coupons and <laughs> I'm heading out to uh, Cracker Barrel later I need those coupons leave them in there <laughs> He, he hasn't said nothing in the air. It's not, he wasn't, I don't think he was thinking anything. And yeah, yeah I mean, it, I think it's pretty much standard procedure. Like anybody in a home like that doesn't have a loaded wallet, but I don't of know. Of course not. <laughs> this is prime for stealing. This very thing is the reason that you don't have a wallet just lying out in a counter when you're in a catatonic state. And this little dickhead steals money from his granddad. Um, and he says, anyway, I got to go and see Tiffany. You remember Tiffany. I'm boning her pretty regular now. <laughs> it's one of the worst phrases like, like anyone could say. One, to a grandparent. Two, to a catatonic person. And three, if you have just stolen money from your catatonic grandpa, use the word fuck. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, why are we saying boning? Like, <laughs> can't say fuck. It's my granddad. I could steal from him, though. Um, I could steal from him. <laughs> Let's just hate this what? movie. What was up with all the like um, J like knockoff J's in yep. movies? But we got one in what was it uh, Friday or Freddy vs Jason, right? Oh, we did get one in Freddy vs Jason. I think they're just. I think is J and Silent Bob that big that like within Hollywood they're like you know we have to put a J in this movie. I think it just Kevin became Smith's the like no token stoner character. Like I think that's he just did it how... so well that it. Yeah. stereotyped him i yeah. think so yeah i i honestly think that it, it was done so well <laughs> like, yeah just... but like they but the thing is like you i don't know it's like you can't capture him because oh, no. he's an idiot <laughs> like these guys are they're like all right you're gonna be like him try to be an idiot but yeah. then it's like they don't do it no. he's almost it's almost like a all the different Bruce Lees at this point with all the different J's. <laughs> yeah, like they just keep appearing in like movies and we spin them up. Like yeah, you know, I had to, like it's almost like the like the costumes departments like that. Oh yeah, we've got a J costume here. <laughs> like, go, yeah. you got one ready to go. Put a baggy like sports like snowboard coat on him and you got it. There we are. If voila. He needs to have long hair though, we'll just put a wig on. Um oh. Yeah, he's I, I like it. Just it's and it doesn't fit the town that they're in. This tiny little town, population fucking twelve, um, <laughs> and a million Santas. So like, as he's as he's saying that though, the the, the thirty year old grandpa grabs him and says, yeah, and for some reason he becomes Pennywise. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, just that demonic voice. <laughs> like, you better watch out, boy, girly boy, girly boy. It's like. <laughs> Christmas Eve is the scariest damn night of the year. And uh, Jay's like, Gramps! <laughs> That's what he calls him. Uh, Gramps, you're awake. Holy shit, let me go and tell someone. He's like, if you see Santa Claus tonight, you better run. Run for your life. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, 
okay. And of course the nurse comes in and then Jay tries to convince her and it fails horribly and we get some kind of, you want to help me do a sponge bath? Which I'm sure the nurse is going to say, like, do you want to see your grandpa's dick? Um, oh, you don't. <laughs> all, right, all right then. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, right, anyway. Our deputy arrives at an abandoned house and the smell hits her right away. I mean, she is just out the car and she's like, oh shit. Is Basically, yeah. Is that a dead raccoon? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in here? What are you feeding him up here? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a currency flush? Um, she, like, she starts walking towards the house, but the door's already open. And once again, I put in brackets here, uh, her sense of smell is exaggerated. Because she is yeah. just like full of, uh, uh, you know, new guys in the corner puking his guts up. Uh, <laughs> Like so, uh, she goes in and she manages to, using the power of her nose, locate the smell almost straight away by going to the basement. Now, the police, I don't think, check the basement first. I think they check the ground floor, but she doesn't really do much of a job of. I think they also would check upstairs before they would check downstairs, but she thinks it's a dead raccoon, so maybe it is in the basement. She's right down there and um, she sees the dead body of Deputy Jordan. Um, mm -hmm. She calls into the receptionist. She says, uh, it's a dead body. It's Jordan. <laughs> Brenda, the receptionist, is like, are you sure? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, <laughs> totally not sure. Like well, the guy that worked with every single day? No, it could be someone else. <laughs> did, they, did they mention at any other point in this movie how long that deputy's kind of been missing? It can't, be, it can't be any more than a day. No. So there would be no stink like that. But, no, you know. like, even though he was cooked, there would be no stink. Like, if anything, the, or, uh, there would be a tastier smell in there. Right, right. Mm. Doesn't make mm. sense. Like none of this makes sense because we'll, we'll get into obviously a little bit more details about the. So like the, the opening scene of this movie is Deputy Jordan having an affair, um, with a married woman. Who has, who's basically walked out on her husband. This husband is a suspect for all three seconds, but we never actually see him on screen. Mm -hmm. um, and it has no other relevance beyond that. But yeah, he, he goes to town on them, like, viciously, like, fucking hacks them up. Well, hacks her up. Which makes you think that maybe it was the husband. Um, mm -hmm. Just for the level of vitriol, this guy actually gets away fairly okay. He's electrocuted to death. It's because the deputy says he's wrapped in exploded Christmas lights and Brenda puts two and two together straight away. She's like that. Oh my God, what do you mean? Like electrocuted? <laughs> like, n no. Like, um, he died of a broken heart because his Christmas lights wouldn't work. <laughs> and his heart grew four times that size. <laughs> and it was a Christmas miracle. It was a Christmas miracle. His head exploded. Um, so like, the deputy says, Oh shit, you said Alana Roach was with him, right? I need to go and search the house. And she's like, <laughs> I love this. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Wait for backup. <laughs> Whoever did it could still be there. I'll send sheriff. Yeah. It's not, I'll send this sheriff. I'll send for this sheriff. I'll send for a sheriff. It's, I'll send sheriff. So Martin <laughs> McDill's character is just Sheriff. That's his name. Which, like, I mean, that makes it very easy to apply for a job. What's your name? Sheriff, the job's yours. Um, oh, wow, this is fitting. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Sheriff by name, Sheriff by nature. Um, so she turns around to go and start um, going up the stairs, and that is where the scene ends. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm going to ask you? I have to ask you, do you have a favourite scene or section of dialogue from these five minutes, Jeff? No, absolutely not. This is just, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> There's nothing to like about this. Um, man, I guess, I guess the just the 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 kid saying boning is I mean, is so awkward. price of admission itself, right? I'm boning her um, pretty regular now. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Tiffany? <laughs> I strive to be able to say that one day to somebody. Yeah, I, I think we should all strive to be able to say it to our grandparents one day. Our parents are yeah. just a, like a work colleague. Just ra random stranger <laughs> on the street. <laughs> yeah, you still put you remember your... this lady that you clearly don't know? Born on a pretty regular. <laughs> Born on a pretty regular just now. <laughs> kind of a big deal. Um, 
yeah, like, I, I mean, like, there's nothing, this is one of those ones where they manage to, for some inexplicable reason, try and shoehorn a scene, which, granted, also doesn't really fit the first movie necessarily, but it's right at the start of the first movie, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like a, like a false start ending. You get that one thing, you think you're getting one movie, and then the wee kid sees his mum get railed um, yeah. and murdered, and then that's what scars him. Um, and this movie, this lands, what, 22 minutes in it? After we've already seen a Santa, like, make a head explode and kill a woman. Um, it's just bizarre. It's, like, really, really bizarre, and it's needless, and it's purely in there to, to make them go, yeah, see, see what we... See how we did that there? You, mm, do, you mm. see, do you remember yeah. that scene? So you were describing every, you know, un- needless and all that. Um, mm. I, I wasn't sure if you were talking about the scene or the entire movie, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we got it, and I mean, I'm happy about it. You can get a, listen, you can get a remake of a movie that doesn't necessarily adhere that closely to the, the formula or story of the original. The great example of that is the House of Wax remake. Which is yeah. basically tourist trap, um, and I love it for that. You know, what I mean, I love the fact that like they have the core element of bodies encased in wax, and like from that point, they're like, we can like we really actually like this other movie, but the studio's not going to let us remake Tourist Trap because no one's fucking seen it. And, right. Like people remember Vincent Price, and they remember. So what we'll do is we'll under the guise of making this movie, we'll just take all the cool elements of this other movie and make that the plot. I'm totally yeah. in with that, right? But what I'm not down with is contextually taking a scene that really, actually, when you think about it, it doesn't necessarily fit the first movie. It is an oddity in the first movie, but it's excusable because it is so early in it. And then take that scene and lock, stock, fling it 20 minutes into your movie and you yeah. tie up nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's just I don't, I don't know. Just, yeah. I don't know, you know who, who was doing the decision making, but they... They, they should reconsider what they're doing. <laughs> they should build a time machine and go back and get... Just as they're about to shoot this scene and go, cut, maybe we shouldn't do this, guys. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, we all think we shouldn't do it? Then why were we going to do it? Because no one had the heart to tell us, so we all just went through with it. That seems like a dumb idea. Right? I'm glad that we like didn't Malcolm do this Malcolm McDowell scene. was there supporting the decision. He's like, yes, yes, do it, do it. He, yeah. like, Malcolm McDowell was literally counting the money he was getting. <laughs> and, like, he, like Malcolm McDowell demanded his money be paid to him in $10 bills so he could count it there. Like, in front of people. Just, like, he is so not interested in this movie. As, like, the, 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 the kind of cultural dissonance that you have to put in to remember that Malcolm McDill was in a Clockwork Orange and in the Silent Night remake is enough to yeah. make my eyes explode in my head by this <laughs> Christmas tree lights being wrapped around them. It, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. We're going to get to primo Malcolm McDill in your other episode. However, because these are all out of order, that other episode, Jeff, may have already been out. Um, <laughs> so I don't know when this is going to drop. That's kind of the, the, the fun of doing these. Also, what the fun of doing these is I get up opportunity to ask you about your podcast and what you're covering and where people can check it out so let the listeners out there know what's happening with your podcast what are you covering and where can people check it out yeah so i'm knight of the nerdy laser me and my buddy richard have been doing that one for gee a couple years now i guess at this point um recently as of this recording we've done dog soldiers the frighteners stakeland we're gonna have a couple guests on to go over some holiday lists so if you haven't had your holiday feel from these episodes which i'd assume you did um just each uh yeah and we'll come over and check this out on there um but yeah you could find us on all the standard podcatchers out there apple Podcasts, spotify maybe stitcher probably amazon but i don't know i don't handle any of that uh, if you really want to interact with us on social media, and by us, I mean maybe Richard, because I'm not doing it, uh, you can find us on Facebook, uh, X, Instagram. I think he says we have a TikTok, but I just kind of ignore him when he talks about that kind of stuff. And then you can follow us over on our YouTube page, uh, all under Night of the Nerdy Laser, I believe. So. You know, what I love about this is you're a young guy, Jeff, but right now I'm picturing you as the grandpa from this movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> just <laughs> going. Put us on the TikTok if you see us on the TikTok run. <laughs> Social media is the scariest damn night of the year. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, please go and check out Jeff's work. Jeff will be back with another one of these episodes, or may, as, may have already been. The only <laughs> way to find out is continue listening, because there's an episode dropping every single day this month, from the 1st through to the 24th. And I know the order, not of these episodes, but I know the order of where episodes like these land, which means there definitely will be another episode of Podcast Under the Stairs tomorrow. So until then, I'll speak to you then.